All right, these are the notes on worksheet 25A or spiral page 25A. You should have this taped in your spiral by now. These are all the theorems we learned earlier this unit, but these are the converse. Remember when you said P implies Q was your, con your um, conditional statement? Then the converse is Q implies P. So all of these are proving that lines are parallel. So the first one is corresponding angles. So for example, on this picture, if we picked angle 2 and 6, if we know those were congruent, then the lines would have to be parallel, line L and M. Okay, angle 2 or 6, sorry, congruent to angle 2 would imply L would have to be parallel to M. And what you would write is parallel lines imply corresponding angles have to be, nope, try again. I just wrote that backwards. You would write corresponding angles that are congruent would imply there had to be parallel lines. I'm going to the next page. If you need the sub to go back to this slide, you'll have to do that. All right, this one is talking about alternate interior angles. Remember, those are the ones that make the Z. So we could say 3 and 5. If 3 was congruent to 5, then L would have to be parallel to M. And you would write here alternate interior angles that are congruent make parallel lines. All right, give me a second to write that down. All right, this one talks about alternate exterior angles. Um, on this maybe example uh, one in, or maybe one and seven would be alternate interior. So if you knew angle one and angle seven were congruent, then the lines L and M would have to be parallel. So here they want you to write the shortened version. So we would say alternate exterior angles congruent make parallel lines. Right. This is the one consecutive interior are the ones that are supplementary. So here if you knew 3 and 6, add it up to equal 180, then L would have to be parallel to M. So the big deal here is to remember that it's supplementary. So consecutive interior angles that are supplementary make parallel lines. All right, so the examples are going to use this picture, and we have to decide which lines have to be parallel. So remember, the two lines, if you're talking about, say, angle 7 and 12, they are along transversal D, but they are between A and B, so A and B are the parallel lines. All right, so let's look through these examples. 2 and 4 are along transversal A, so the parallel lines would be C and D. And the reason they would be parallel is because 2 and 4 are called, 
I hope you all said corresponding angles. And they have to be congruent in order to prove the lines parallel. All right, I'm going to erase these. And now we're going to talk about 5 and 10. 5 and 10 are making a Z going this way. So C is the transversal, but the two that would have to be parallel would be A and B. And 5 and 10 are called alternate interior angles. And if they are congruent, then they prove the lines are parallel. Remember, the converses all have proved parallel at the end. Moving on to C, erase again, and it says 6 and 10 add up to 180. The word for that is supplementary. So 6 and 10 are called consecutive interior angles, and the two lines they are between are A and B. So A and B would have to be parallel, and again, it's consecutive interior angles angles that are supplementary, not congruent, make parallel lines. All right, D says 1 in 14. 1 and 14 are exterior angles along line C, which is the transversal, but the two that would be parallel would be, again, A and B. And we said they were called alternate exterior angles. Again, they're congruent, making those two lines parallel. Right, E, same picture, but 14 and 15 adding up to 180. Okay, this is supplementary again. So 14 and 15 are actually consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, but they are a long line B, and in between these two, which I can't see the letters. There we go. Those are C and D. So C is parallel to D. Excuse me, 11 and 16 are the next ones. Oh, this is a trick. This is totally a trick. 11 and 16 are always congruent because they're vertical. But line C and line A could be doing crazy business. There doesn't have to be any parallel lines for those two to be congruent. So we're going to say none. Vertical angles don't prove parallel lines. All right, G talks about 4 and 15. 4 and 15, if we look along here, are called alternate exterior.
and they're congruent, not supplementary. And they are a long transversal D, but the two lines they're proving parallel here would be A and B. All right, moving on, it talks about angle 10 and 12. 10 and 12 are both along line B, so the parallel lines would be C and D. Do you remember what 10 and 12 are called? They are in the same position, so they are called corresponding angles and their being congruent makes the lines parallel. Nine and 13 are supplementary because of the 180, but look where nine and 13 are. 9 and 13 are a linear pair, and when they're right next to each other like that, 9 and 13 have to add up to 180 no matter what. So this line will be doing this, this one will be doing this. There doesn't have to be any parallel lines in order for 9 and 13. They're just supplementary or linear pairs, so they're always supplementary. Doesn't prove anything parallel. Doesn't mean there couldn't be parallel lines, but it doesn't prove any of them parallel. J talks about two and seven. Two and seven are making a Z, but it's a sideways Z. Okay, they are along transversal A, but the lines that would be parallel, making the Z here, are lines C and D. And they were called, the Z is alternate interior. <clears throat> okay, last one is a trick one again. It talks about six. Oops, I forgot to erase the picture. It talks about six and 11. The thing here is that angle six is made from line C and line A. And I could make it exactly the same size is angle 11 okay that second line doesn't look very good here and line b and d wouldn't have to be parallel nothing would have to be parallel okay in other words like this is made up of these two lines, and this angle is made up of these two lines, and they're not tied together at all. So they could be the same size, and none of the lines would have to be parallel. So I'm just going to say they have no lines in common. All right, guys, so you need to work on the worksheet that the sub is going to pass out. It says practice on parallel lines. The front side that has example three, four, five, and six, it just wants numbers. Those are pretty easy. And on the back, 
you have to do what we've been doing here. For the last six questions, you have to set up the algebra, but then you have to write one of these converses. Okay? I will leave an answer key with the sub as well. Good luck, guys. Put your worksheet in the basket if you finish.